Just a little quick one today. As you can see, my indicator is broke. I have no indicators arrived. So I'm just gonna swap them over. So the first thing you need to do is obviously open the bonnet and the indicator is held on with a little metal clip. I'll see if I can see it here. Um, you can't see on that side, let me try on this side. Right, yeah, see this little metal ring here? That one there, this holds the indicator down. Basically, you just pull this and slide it down and then release that. And then the indicator at the front here just pulls out like this. Then you obviously just unplug those little springs, that bit there. See, that was hooked around the back of the light fitting, which is there. And that's how the indicator's held in. And then you just unplug this and swap lights. So I should just put my phone down, unplug this, and put a new light on. So these are the new ones that I bought. Um, they're not orange, they're white as you can see. And they're actually for Vauxhall Mavario. Mavario. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, but they fit exactly onto this. So let's put this on. This is what it did look like, orange as you see. And I'm changing them to white. So we're gonna put this on and then see what the difference is. That's the first one fitted. I think it looks quite smart, to be honest. There you go. Two new indicators fitted, as you can see. I think they look pretty good. They're a nice fit, although they're for a Vauxhall Mavalio, but I think they fit pretty well. And have a job done. Okay, as you can see, I've started to remove some of the wiring. I've just removed the control board off there. You can see a picture now. Um, that's what I'm left with there. Got lots of other bits of wiring down here. And there's some wiring over here to deal with, which is what I'm just doing. I'm just to the side panel right there, so you can get to the wire in there. And I'm just going to try and remove all these ends now, which don't go nowhere. So it's just a case of getting these wires and tracing them back to where they go and disconnecting them at both ends, pulling them out, and that's disconnected. Um, I know it still starts and runs, because I've checked that. So um, at this present moment, I'm just tracing where these wires go and where they come from. Um, obviously, they're all redundant because none of them are connected this end and everything still works. It should work. Um, so they're not doing nothing. So um, I'm just going to find the other ends now and cut off. Or well, disconnect them and put them out. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Wires, wires, wires everywhere. Every time I get a wire, I pull a panel back and there's loads more. It's like spaghetti junction everywhere. <sighs> I can't sort of wires. But I'm determined to get them all out. Well, as you can see, there's a mass of cables that I've removed. Um, the bus is still running. It gave me a couple of um, complications taking out the Genesis system, but um, it is all out. Well, it's all disconnected anyway. It's not all out yet. There's wires everywhere. There's wires all behind these walls. There's still wires in the walls, as you see. Um, I've still got bits and pieces of wire in here and there that I have to remove. Like control. One of the control box up there still to remove. One there still to remove, but they're all disconnected. Um, and the Genesis system is out. And I've still got to remove that one up there. I've removed the one from behind the dashboard there, and there's the main, um, what would you call it, the main CPU or the main control under the dashboard there, which I've still got to remove. But like I say, it's all been disconnected now. The whole van is a total mess again. This, the whole van becomes a total mess all the time. Um, coffee. Can't do about it. But as you can see, there's loads of wires. Some of these I can reuse. I mean, these battery cables I'll probably reuse. Because they're okay. Um, the rest of it is mainly junk. But um, that took a whole day to remove this wiring and to keep the van running. Obviously, because this is all intermingled with the van's electrical system as well, so you cut wires really nearly things happen. So what happened to me was I took out 
the wiring loom for the sirens, which I think was this, and this one, which obviously controlled the lights. And um, I lost all my rear lights and my brake lights, indicators, everything on the back of the van, basically. So I then had to rewire up the original wiring, find the original wires, which I did, and disconnect the Genesis wires from them, and then reconnect them back up. It was a bit of a pain, but um, I have my lights working again. Um, also the same, the air suspension on this ambulance was con also controlled by the Genesis system. So obviously when I took the Genesis system off, my air suspension wasn't working, so I couldn't pump it up. So as a temporary measure, I've just literally wired the compressor and the, um, and the pressure switch, obviously, um, to my ignition. So when I turn the ignition on, the com it compressor comes on if it needs to, if the pressure switch tells it to. Um, so that's a temporary measure for that, but that's working fine at the moment. I will eventually get a switch so I can raise and lower it as I want. But at this present moment, yeah, that's it. So as you can see, lots of wires. But um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there slowly. I've also, because I took the ceiling down, um, as I showed you before, um, and tried to drive the van, the ceiling was just flapping about so much. So I've stuck these battens in. As you can see there, that's the, that's the ceiling fan there. Coming along to the skylight, which is there to the back. So I had to stick these buttons in just to give the ceiling a bit of strength because obviously it was only fiberglass and it was that was crooked there. Yeah, that was not straight. I'll have to check that. Um, yeah, so so obviously it was um flapping around a bit because it only had that one metal support here, there, across the whole middle of the ceiling and with the weight of the skylight and the fan, obviously it made it a bit flappy. So I've stuck these buttons in, as you can see there, just to keep seeing a bit of rigidity until I um, insulate it and put the ceiling up. But that's going to be a while because I've got to do solar panels and a few other things. I need to move this fan because although it's quite a big roof, there's no space at the top because the skylight and the fan and aerials and things like that. So I have to move this fan forward to where that vent used to be, which I blocked up the other day. Um, so I can fit my solar panels on here on the roof because there's no other place to mount them so that's going to be my next job I should imagine okay so it's time to reseal my skylight I've removed the top of it four screws disconnected from the handles um, and now I'm gonna cut round the edge of a standing knife and slowly prise it up clean off all the edges and the, and the roof itself and then we see it. So this is my next job. Right, so there we have the skylight removed. Clean up these edges. As you can see. And there's the skylight itself. So I'll take that and clean that up as well. And we will seal this with some bitrum tape, I think that's what it's called. So that's to come next. Well, as you can see, that's the surround of the roof cleaned. So now, to actually clean the skylight bit itself. Next. Okay, and that's the skylight cleared up as well. The best I can do it all the way around the edges. Right, to fix it in, I'm using this, which is um, sort of like a mastic tape. There is a name, Bitrual Tape or something it's called. It's like sticky tape stick one side down and then pull the paper off the other side um, and it molds the shape so I'm going to use that to stick it with um, I use this on my last um, van when I had a leak on some of them we sealed it with this and didn't have no more problems after that so touch wood um, I'll be able to do the same with this one so let's get this stuck on and then um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's fitted there you go, I've now stuck the tape all the way around as you can see. It's like a bitumen tape. And now I'll place the roof on top, screw it down and hopefully that will seal. So as you can see I've put the roof back on now. I've trimmed around the edges here just to remove the excess bitumen tape, no, bitual tape or whatever it is, whatever it's called. I've just got a lot thicker than what I needed. 
So I've just trimmed off the edge all the way around. So it's sealed um, on the inside. I'm just get my ladder. Inside of the van, I've had to put the bottom bit on, pop this around because obviously it clamps, it pulls the top bit down and clamps it together like a sandwich, you know. So I needed to put the bottom on, put it down, clamp it, and seal it to the tape. But um, that's how I've resealed my sunroof. Now I need to put the top cover back on. Wait for it to rain and see if it leaks or not.